This is uh, Batyard Productions, and here we have another exciting review for you. Uh, we have a special guest host today. Hi, I'm Connor Donovan. Very happy to be here. And I'm Connor Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> and we are here to review uh, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Yes, sir. So this came out 1958. Yes, yeah, a classic of Ray Harryhausen. Yeah. Ray's visual, uh, visual effects designer. Yep, uh, die, die animation, which he coined that term himself. It's supposed to basically just kind of get the audience in there like, what's die animation, you know? So you yeah. see all these creatures and all these effects, stop motion on par. So that's the main reason why I've seen this movie, because of Ray Harryhausen himself. Fun fact, die animation is what I get after too much Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, so better... Better lay off. It's unless you work. unless you want to make some beautiful art. It's beautiful art. Oh. <laughs> it's abstract. <laughs> but uh, I got my introduction to Ray Harryhausen with this uh, documentary that was uh, it was performed uh, narrated by Leonard Nimoy. And it's really, really excellent. I think you can find it on YouTube for free. We'll nice. put the we'll put a link in the description down below wherever you can find it. But that's how I found it. Um, and it dives really deep into Ray Harryhausen. Yeah. And so uh, I'm wearing this King Kong shirt, which is uh, Willis O'Brien did the animation mm. for uh, King Kong, the 1933 film. And that was the biggest inspiration for Ray Harryhausen. And at one point, he worked with his uh, with this hero uh, in Mighty Joe Young. I oh. think that was 1940. I didn't uh, realize something. that was a Harryhausen. Yeah, that, they shared it. Mo I think most of the animation was done uh, by Harryhausen. Willis O'Brien was like, yeah, you got it, you know, and just kind <laughs> of moved kid. on. You go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> this is um, this is a standard, uh, well, this is uh, Ray Harryhausen, um, all, all by himself. He did all the animation that you see in the film, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Mm. For the time, quite exciting. <laughs> it's, so it's something that you can still immerse yourself in, even today. It's excellent. I gotta say, the animation is definitely what drives me into this film, you know? Yeah, something about it, it's like, it's niche, you know? You just sort of you enjoy that style. Like, I can, I, I know what this is. I know what I'm looking at. <laughs> but it's it's entertaining. Yeah. It's entertaining. He always said, uh, Ray Harryhausen said that, like, it's kind of like a dream state, you know, when you see yeah. a film. And he's like, this is more dreamlike when you see these kind of motions with this puppetry and these kind of animals and creatures, which I totally agree with him. It just feels feels more kind of like you're in that state of mind. That's like a good way to describe it. That's a good way to describe you know? it. And I, I like that feel of it. It's, very, it's escapism at its ah, finest. Yes. Which is why we go to the movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the basic story of the seventh voyage of Sinbad, he is, um, he is on the ver voyage with this princess. Yes. yes, yes. So they, I don't even know why they stop at the island in the beginning. They're on the island. Oh, uh, they were there to like, I, I think they were there just to, as like a supply stop. They didn't know what the island yeah. was. They're just like, we must gather fresh water and coconuts or whatever sailors right. eat. Right. I think that's what it was. So they're just yeah. stopping for supplies and everything like that. And they end up running into... Sakura. Uh, so or Sakura. Sakura. That's how you pronounce it. Sakura and Sakura. the great mighty Cyclops. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, so Sakura is a magician who... I guess he lives on the realm of the island yeah, of the Cyclops. Yeah, he made his camp on the, uh, the, that, what was it, oh god, what was the name of the island again? It was like, it was like Disastria or something like something, that. Something, it's very close Cataclysm to or something we'll like that, but it was an island screen. of monsters. Yeah, so basically he protects the, the whole voyage and everything like that with, with the genie that he has in his possession. And it makes basically like a force field shield around, um, Oh, more like a magic shield yeah. around the Cyclops itself. So it's he typical can't break genie the rules. He can basically do anything, get you out of there in a pinch. They right. don't see he did this genie didn't seem to operate on a number system though. It no. seemed like you could just rub the lamp and ask for whatever. Yeah, it did seem like unlimited. But uh, you had to know the right words to to say to. No, oh, that's true. You needed to genie. know the password, Dragon yeah. Ball style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, genie genie now appear. That's oh, all yeah. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> 
But so they basically go back to Baghdad, where uh, Sinbad is about to marry the princess. Yes, the princess from India. Yeah, and they're, they're two kingdoms that are about to merge, and it's going to be um, Create a golden... peace across the ocean. Yeah, create a golden age and a peace between these two nations. But Sakura wants to go back to the island of the Cyclops because he, he left the genie lamp there. Ultimate and power, and he doesn't care who he's gonna, what empires he's gonna topple to get it. Exactly. So he basically sabotages this reunion by telling them of their future. And their future was that he's gonna see great despair between these two nations, and this, yeah. and it's gonna be great divide. And only he can stop it with his magic. Mm -hmm. And you know what he does next? He goes to the princess's quarters where she's sleeping and shrinks her. Yes, because that's what you do. <laughs> I need this lamp. I'm going to shrink your princess. What? So, right. so the princess gets shrunken. Um, the effect looks really great. Yeah, no, it was a, another great thing. You know, they, it's a lot of forced perspective as her limbs start to, to shrink and disappear mm -hmm. from view. Uh, sort of stuff like that, and uh, I don't know, I mean, I don't know exactly how they did it. I imagine it was like, you know, green screen and stuff like that. I don't know if they could... No, they probably couldn't. I don't think they didn't have green screen then. No, They had no. matte paintings. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's, it's so cool. Like, even now, I'm like, I'm like, how did they do that? Exactly. How did they make her so See, that's small? how great the, the effects look, because okay. you think that it's going to be, um, you know, it's that's top notch. Yeah. Okay. And we're back, Connor. Yes, we are. So we left off on the Shrinking Princess. Yes, yes. A great effect, definitely, uh, for the, especially for the times. I'm still not trying to. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how they did it. Yeah, without green screen. Exactly. People today will think that it's uh, top-notch uh, technology from today, which it's not. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. For the times, that must have been blowing people's minds. But then again, so were like giant claymation dragons and ogres. Yeah, which we we will get into. Yes. Very yes. <laughs> so basically, the princess gets shrunken. The Sultan, which is her father, gets really pissed off and, and says this could ignite war between our two nations. Exactly. So he basically wants to destroy the kingdom of, of Sinbad, of Baghdad. So they have to venture off to the, the island of the Cyclops to grab to get, these... Oh yeah, the mysterious MacGuffin recipe to right. uh, find the cure to the shrinkage. Cer the certain ingredients, which one is an eggshell of a giant mystical bird. Yes, right. So they bring Sakor on... Sinbad doesn't have enough uh, crew members, so he basically grabs whatever he can get, which is right, yeah. basically a lot of scumbags. Yeah, a bunch of the people docks. who broke the law previously. <laughs> so you, you will earn your freedom if you sail with Sinbad. Very shady characters, so you don't know what. Yeah, so it's literally right. They recruit him right in the middle of a prison yard. Yeah, exactly. So they they bring him to on the voyage to the island of the Cyclops to the return of the island of the Cyclops. They are conniving and trying to make up a plan to basically backstab yeah. Sinbad and take over his crew. Yeah, yeah. Why should we have to listen to him? Yeah. <laughs> basically. basically is what they say, yeah. So, so they, they tie up Sinbad, put him in the dungeon, and to move on, they eventually pass this island of screaming... Oh, yeah, that's right. It was like the... the Sirens. It was like, but it was like opposite sirens. sirens. Instead of like throwing yourself into the rocks, their screams are so horrible that you drown yourself. Yeah. So they basically like they kill themselves, and then Sinbad gets takes over yep. of the crew again. They did the uh, the wax in the ears trick, exactly, just, just as they did in the Odyssey. So then they end up, and just like in the Odyssey, they end up seeing mm -hmm. a cyclops on the remote mm -hmm. island. You know. And at one point, they poke it in the eye, and like instead of the Odyssey where they have a flaming poop stick that they <laughs> shove in his in his eye socket, it's just a regular stick, stick that's yeah. on fire. They just sort of jab him in. <laughs> I mean, hey, it works. Like, that's how you beat a Cyclops. He's got one very exploitable weakness. You yeah. just got to get the one eye, and he's done. You go for the eye. And they're not they're not particularly smart canonically. Either so. No, they're. Uh, I like his whole setup. You know, he has like all these clubs and everything. Oh like yeah. That. He yeah. has this little chair. He's that like he sits a, he's on like a giant turn, guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to like, cook his people. Up. Yeah, to cook his people. Like uh, uh, Sinbad's first handmate. Right? I like the idea of the uh, the cage that he kept uh, Sinbad and the crew in. Uh, was like his spice cabinet or his pantry. That's what, <laughs> it's basically the same idea. Like he just brought back a fresh crop of humans, needs to store yeah, it for dinner. It's like a link of sausages. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's the meat drawer. Yeah, so he's basically cooking uh, Sinbad's first mate, and uh, oh, he has yeah. to take the princess out 
of her small yes. box. Her tiny stature comes in handy at this point. Yeah, so she frees um, the, the... She undoes the latch, she yeah. frees Sinbad and the gang. Yeah, exactly. And they are it's, able to uh, take them. And Sakura had the uh, ability to save them, but he basically said... He ran off and tried to grab the lamp yeah, instead. He, and no, then, the lamp! He was discovered by the, the Cyclops. Yeah. So he didn't... That he, created To problems. no avail. So let's get into it. Yeah, what do we think of this movie? This. This movie... I know you're a huge Ray Harryhausen fan. Yeah, this movie... This this is definitely one of his best works. You know, when, when, I, when I see this film, I just look for the artistry and the detail, you mm -hmm. know, like how many minusculing hours. Oh know, my god, yeah, the uh, grueling uh, process of uh, making those monsters. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. You know, like you see all the fine details, all the emotion in uh, the Cyclops' face mm -hmm. is pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta say, you know, that's... that's uh, and I was looking at Rotten Tomatoes, um, the score is 100%, which was like really? kind of, I was like, huh, I, I don't think I ever saw IMDB that. gives it a 7 out of 10, I think yeah. it's a little more reasonable. Yeah, that sounds more reasonable yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, Connor, as your first time seeing this film, what is what were your initial thoughts? Well, you know, I love a good cornball movie, and this movie <laughs> was hot buttered corn on the cob. It was great. Yeah. I, it's you know it's it's a t it's a period piece. Cinema wasn't super evolved at that point. It was uh, fairly well, uh, not fairly young technology, but a young technology at the time. Yeah. And I I just it, they treated it like a stage performance where it's a little bit more over the top. It you know fills the room. Mm -hmm. You know the the presence of these actors fills a room. Everyone they thinks, command attention. Everyone thinks that Sinbad is the greatest human of all that time. That is my favorite trope <laughs> in this movie. Somehow Sinbad is just the coolest guy that has ever existed. And he can do nothing wrong and everyone loves him. It's just... Yeah, everyone wants to be Sinbad. Oh my god, yeah. Um, and the genie himself, he's a young child. A young lad. Probably of like lad. 8 or 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. Conceivably as the genie, though, he is uh, thousands of years old, whatever. Yeah, I think he's... Uh, uh, he's a good little actor for yeah, what he yeah. is, you know. Uh, he's not certainly held his own with the rest of them. Yeah, and a lot of the other actors are definitely obviously <laughs> overdubbed, so yeah. they must have been pretty <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so I don't think they overdubbed the kid. I think no, he was no. pretty articulate. That's with the, with that his seemed sayings. pretty legitimate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lip synced up pretty good. Well, the funny thing about I I want to mention about the genie. He's like he wants to be free. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> he wants to I be unenslaved. And, right. And then at the end. He's basically Sinbad's slave anyway. Yeah. He's his cabin boy yeah, for the rest yeah. of his days. The genie yeah. talks about, like, if you help me use my powers to free myself, I'll free you guys. And mm. there's a whole scene where a tiny princess uh, slips into the lamp to talk to him on his own terms to see if he would just come out and help them. <laughs> but he ends up giving them the password so they can summon him right. and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, that's how but they But while go. they're down there, he mentions just, like, I live my life according to other people's whims. You know, I want a life of freedom. And his choice for a life of freedom is to just hang out and clean up after Sinbad. <laughs> yeah, He's so excited to be his cabin boy. <laughs> Essentially his indentured servant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting. He's basically a slave to a slave, and I think he got a big. But mind Sinbad out. is cool. He got so to hang out what with better Sinbad. life is there to live on, in the cool shade of Sinbad? I want to see the sequel where he grows up and he's the next Sinbad, oh, genius yeah. Sinbad. Yeah. <laughs> I watched that movie. That'd be pretty I would, bad. I would definitely watch that movie. But um, I gotta say. With Sakura, he's definitely conniving and devious. Nobody blames him once, by no. the way, for the princess shrinking. <laughs> no, exactly. he's the only he's the only magician in the entire region. The only magician they've seen who has the ability and, to yeah, transform exactly. uh, these people into mythical creatures, like the Snake Lady. Exactly, the like they've seen the way he can transform people. They establish his powers and like they establish his motives. And then when this horrible tragedy happens that only he can cure by going back to the island, nobody questions it once. They're just like, well, well, our hands are tied. We'll yeah, have to do it. He's the only one who knows how to create the potion <laughs> to turn back the princess. And I'm just side. sitting there like, he did it. Yeah. Like, if I was in that room, <laughs> exactly. it's like, that's it's the, him. That's he the first one this. you blame. Yeah. And no one blames him. No. You know, he definitely <laughs> just gets let him get away with He's it. just like, I need my lamp. You know, so that's, uh, all, that's all he wants. That's a fun trope. He's the that only one funny. who benefits. Exactly. From, from yeah. <laughs> like, he really played those guys like a violin. Like, <laughs> like a... Like a like a three-piece string, like, triplet. Yeah. <laughs> like, the easiest violin you could play. That's yeah, what... <laughs> they got, they, he got him right in the palm of their hands. <laughs> yeah, so, I gotta say, with Sakura, um, it's... He's, uh... 
I like his character. He's very um, deceiving with uh, the crew members. Like, for some reason, they're dying of thirst once they arrive on the island. He won't allow them to drink the, the running water. Right, the red water. The red water, he says it's poisonous. But right. then they start to drinking, drink it, and then it's, it's like wine. wine or, yeah, it's like wine. So, he, even from then... He's a dick. Yeah, he's, he's a big dick. And, uh, I mean, I guess you don't want your crew members to Drunk be fighting... Job, yeah, yeah, to be fighting off a... That's it, and uh, they even show up and fight the... Cyclops. They fight the Cyclops. It's great. It's just like a <laughs> mob of, like, drunken sailors holding spears. Like, all right, I'm gonna get yeah. you. I'm gonna get you. And the, the interesting thing about this island, there's more than one Cyclops. I thought it was just the one. Yeah, no, there were a couple of them. There's, there? there's at least two. There's at that least we two see. we can establish. I'm sure I'm among sure others there's more. Yeah, there's a there's a two-headed dragon. Was it two-headed? No, dragon? two-headed uh, um, vulture. That's thing. what it was. The two-headed vulture. And then a wingless dragon. And the then, yeah, and the wingless dragon who's guarding Sakura's uh, basically his treasure. Yeah, his, his treasure. Room. His lab, as mm -hmm. it were. So I, I gotta say this is this is a great fun film. You know, yeah, I yeah. don't I don't want to give away the ending because that's when <laughs> you'll you never predict it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but exactly what you think is gonna happen happens. Oh, the one thing I want to point upon is uh, the scene with the Cyclops. The Cyclops. I mean, not the scene with the Cyclops. The the skeleton fight. Uh, oh with yeah. Sinbad, between Sinbad and um, the skeleton itself. Obviously uh, choreographed uh, beforehand. Mm -hmm. had to be. But uh, it's uh, it's pretty pretty great, and it definitely gave the inspiration for Ray Harryhausen to do um, the fight with the seven skeletons in Jason and the Argonauts. Yeah, yeah. which is like my what? iconic scene. Iconic yeah. scene. One skeleton. Why not make it seven? <laughs> yeah. They had to one up themselves from the uh, the last one. Yeah, you know, it's like when they did uh, the Battle of Bastards in Game of Thrones. Like, well, we need something bigger than the uh, than the siege on King's Landing. I mean, something ridiculous. And now they're talking about Slight Tangent Season 9. They're going to have a battle bigger than any of the Lord of the Rings productions. So wow. We'll see about That's that. That's crazy. Well, look forward to that. Look forward to that. I'm so behind in Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, me too, man. Actually, not so much anymore. But uh, another trope about this movie that I really enjoyed is not only just how cool Sinbad was, like, without any reason at all, but just like, how much, like, people worshipped him. Just like see with for no like real no real reason at all. Just that he's cool. I guess he's like a prince too. Is it that? Is it, it that he's royalty? Yeah, I think he okay. is royalty because you know he's the reason why these uh, two kingdoms are yeah, peace yeah, and everything true. like that's that. True. He's gonna marry the princess. Now, I gotta say with the princess, she had a weird part in her hair. The bang. Oh yeah, she had the little the little yeah, curl. I know there. this is a very minute yeah. detail. I, that's just a hairline but, thing. Yeah, that's yeah. not where I would have parted it personally. Yeah. I mean they obviously did it purposefully, but yeah. it's just like what is that? It's yeah. just like one little patch. It's something you can't help but it's notice. a little distracting. And I gotta say the the score by mm. Bernard Herman. Beautiful score. It's pretty fantastic. Once you hear the first introduction to the, the piece itself, you're, you, it's just in your head. You oh know, yeah, the intro you, sequence is great. It's very, very me memorable. Unlike a lot of scores today, where they're basically generic sounds of uh, Inception over <laughs> and over again. This is uh, this is classic uh, orchestral score of uh, that movies. Um, I think need to... And they don't skip on the brass. No. They don't skip on the brass. They, they don't. I see a lot of that. There's not a lot of high horns in a lot of modern composition, I don't yeah. think. He done uh, the score for Taxi Driver. Yeah, I couldn't believe I'd never heard of this guy when you ran down yeah. his portfolio Citizen Kane and a bunch of others. In yeah, insane credits. So definitely check it out. I You can find the score on... Um, on Spotify, if you had yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Seven Voyage of Sinbad, uh, definitely give it a recommendation if you're interested in film work and the art of creating monsters, movie monsters. This is definitely top A class, I've got to say. It's all around fantastic. It might be a little corny, but it's a great it's a great uh, world to lose yourself in. It's beyond corny, but that's <laughs> one, that's one of the. But honestly, the it's an there. hour of twenty. It's an hour and twenty minutes where you're just gonna sit there smiling and enjoying the fights. Exactly, it's very it's very quick watch, so won't waste any time with this one. Despite the technology difference, it holds up. It definitely does. I think it's more admirable with uh, with the technology. There you go. Then, it stands the test of time. That's the mark of good cinema. Yeah, exactly. So, tip the hat to you, Ray Harryhausen, and uh, signing off. This was Batyard Productions Review with Connor Donovan. And Josh Lawton. That's me. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and that's the, that's the outro. Cut it there. Cut it there, Josh.